In example 1, we have Sharon, an asset manager, is asked to build and manage a portfolio of fixed income bonds to retire multiple corporate debt liabilities. The debt liabilities have a market value of £50.6 million, a modified duration of 7.2, and a basis point value of £36,432. She buys a portfolio of British government bonds having a market value of £64.3 million, a modified duration of 3.8, and a basis point value of £24,434. So there is an initial surplus of £13.7 million here, which is the market value of the assets or the bonds minus the market value of the debt liabilities. The negative duration gap here is calculated as the BPV of the asset minus the BPV of the liability. Now the surplus allows her to pursue a contingent immunization strategy to retire the debt at hopefully a lower cost than a more conservative duration matching approach. So the duration gap requires Sharon to buy or go long interest rate futures contracts to close the gap. For this futures contract, it is based on 10-year guilds with par value of £100,000 per contract and the BPV is £97.6648 per contract. And currently she has purchased or gone long 150 contracts. So comment if Sharon is over hedging or under hedging and what is her view on interest rates based on her actions here. Now what we, what we need to do now is we need to calculate how many contracts are actually needed to close the gap. And then we'll compare the 150 contracts that she purchased versus the amount that is required to close the gap. So in this case, uh, the BPV uh, of the assets is definitely not equal to the BPV of the liability. So we will need to add in the number of futures contract multiplied by the BPV of the futures contract. And this has to be equal to the BPV of the liabilities. Okay, so this is the equation that is needed to calculate how many contracts do we need to close the gap. Now the BPV of the assets is 24,434. So that's 24434. Okay, and we need to solve for the number of contracts. The BPV of each contract is 97.6648 and the BPV of the liabilities is 36,432. Now, if you calculate the number of contracts, that would be 36,432 minus 24,434 divided by 97.6648. So this will give us 122.85 which will round to the closest uh, round number. So that's 123. So this is telling us that if, okay, Sharon wants to close the gap, she will have to long 123 contracts, okay, to close the duration gap between the assets and the liability. But what has she done? She has actually gone long 150 contracts. In other words, she has purchased more than what is needed. Okay, So she has purchased more than what is needed to close the gap. So in this case, she is over hedging. Okay? And the result of doing this is that the position will be over hedged. Okay? So we say that she is over hedging or she will have an over hedged position. Okay? And why, did, why does she do it? So when you are over hedging here, so the result would be the BPV of the asset would be greater than the BPV of the liability as a result of going long more than what is needed. Okay, and can we show this? We can. So if I were to use this same equation, okay, just on the left hand side, so based on the left hand side of the equation, so if I take the BPV of the assets plus 150 contracts, okay, assume this is what she did, multiply by 97.6648. What we will get here is that the BPV of the asset plus the BPV of the 150 contracts will give us £39,084. And this amount is greater than the BPV of the liability, which is 36432 Okay, so the BPV of the asset side with the derivative will be greater than the BPV of the liability side. And the reason why you will want the BPV of the asset and the derivative to be higher is because you think that interest rate is going to fall. Okay, for example, if interest rate were to drop by 
a very large number. So if interest rate declines by 1% here, then the PV, okay, the value of the asset will increase by 39,084 pounds. Okay, so in this case, uh, the asset side, the asset side will increase by 39,084 pounds, which is a gain. Okay, and on the liability side, the liability value will increase by 36,432 pounds, which is a loss. But the gain here, the gain from the asset is greater than the loss from the liability appreciation. So net, net, this will be a gain. Okay, so the only reason why Sharon would want to hedge or would want to over hedge in this case or buy more than what is needed is because her view is that interest rate is going to fall. Now, of course, what is then considered under hedging? So in this case, if Sharon decided not to buy 150 contracts, maybe she decided to, let's say, only buy long 100 contracts. Okay. And take note why, uh, why I took 100 here is because I'm, getting, I'm trying to pick something less than 123, the amount that is needed to close the gap. So if I or if Sharon were to long less than 123 contracts, that means her view must be that interest rate will rise. Okay, that means you expect interest rate to increase. So you actually under hedge. You hedge less than what is needed. And the reason why we do this is when you long 100 contracts, the BPV of the asset plus the B, uh, plus the BPV of the futures. Okay, for that 100 contracts will be less than the BPV of the liability. That means in the case where interest rate goes up, okay, the decline, the decline in the value of the asset and the derivative will actually be less, okay? It will be less than the decline in the value of the liability. So net, you will also have a gain, okay? So take note that overhedging here means doing more than what is needed. In example two, you are presented information about Zcon's pension fund, which is primarily invested in corporate bonds with a mixture of investment grade and speculative grade issues. This information is presented below. So in terms of liabilities, it has a market value of 46.5 million euros, modified duration of 13.1, and a basis point value of 60,915 euros. On the asset side, the market value is 50 million euros, so we observe a surplus here and the modified duration is 19.6 and the basis point value of the assets is 98,000 euros. So the BPV of the asset is greater than the BPV of liability. Now Mark, the fund manager of the pension fund explains that he uses futures contracts on euro denominated German bonds to reduce the duration gap between assets and liabilities. Because the pension fund has a small surplus, of about 3.5 million euros here, he would like to increase this surplus through active management of the portfolio. So he employs a contingent immunization strategy. The fund is currently short 260 futures contracts based on a 10-year bond with a par value of 100,000 euros and the BPV of one contract is 98.2 euros. So comment if Mark is over hedging or under hedging and what is his view on interest rates. Now, first we'll need to calculate the number of futures contracts that is required to close the duration gap. So we'll make use of the equation where the BPV of the asset plus the number of futures contract times the BPV of a futures contract is equal to the BPV of the liabilities. So the BPV of the asset is 98,000, okay, plus the number of futures contracts which we need to solve for. The BPV of one futures contract is 98.2, and the BPV of uh, the liability is 60,915. So the number of futures contract required here is 60,915 minus 98,000 divided by 98.2. All right, so this should give us about ne negative 377.65, which we round to the nearest whole number. So that's negative 378. So this is saying that to close the duration gap, Mark will have to short 378 futures contract. But as of now, he has only short 260 futures contract. In other words, Mark is actually taking a short position that is less than what is needed to close the duration gap. So in this case, we say that the fund is under hedge, okay? Or Mark is under hedging that position. 
So what is the implication of it? So if you are under hedging, as of now, the BPV of the asset is greater than the BPV of the liability. So if mark is over hedging, the result will be that the BPV of the asset and the 260 con uh, futures contract will still be greater than the BPV of the liability. In other words, Mark's view is that interest rates is going to fall. Now, how do we show that? Okay, so if I just want to calculate, just to show, uh, I'll make use of this equation here. Okay, I'll make use of this left-hand side here. So I will take 98,000, okay, and then I will plus, and here we have short 260 contracts, so that's negative 260. Multiply by the BPV of the contract, which is 98.2. So this gives us 72,000. 468 so with the bpv of the asset and the futures contract the net the total bpv is still greater than the bpv of the liability so the only time when you want to position your uh, portfolio this way is if you think that interest rate is going to decline because if interest rate does decline the value of the asset and the futures contract will rise more than the increase in the value of the liability okay so that that will give a gain to the portfolio or the pension fund okay so this is deemed as under hedging because you are short you take a short position but it's smaller than what is needed to hedge now of course if uh, mark were to let's say hedge 400 contracts okay 400 contracts which is more than 378 okay then that will be considered over hedging Okay, they will be considered over hedging and the only time that he would do this if he is if he thinks that interest rate is going to rise okay then you will short more than what is needed so be careful with the term over hedging and under hedging it has to be relative to the current position versus their action in example one earlier the bpv of the asset was less than the bpv of the liability Okay, and for this case, we are using a scenario where the BPV of the asset is greater than the BPV of the liabilities.